be casting the Overwatch, uh, sorry, the Immorals Pug number two here. We got four teams with us today, and uh, I think it's going to be a great one. Yeah, this is going to be great. It's going to be a mix of a whole bunch of Division Six teams from the Overwatch University League. So uh, it's going to be an interesting mix. Uh, I don't know how many of these players have actually played together, but the names are going to be very, very familiar. Now, one thing to note, uh, since this is a pug, a randomized um, match with random teams, uh, one of these teams does have a Masters player. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Is that, um, uh, is it Masters in 3500 Masters? Is that what's going on? So, uh, yes. Oh. Uh, is a Masters player. So, interesting. What happened to the rest of Team 1? Where did they go? Um, looks like Green and Gold is ready. Um, but Aaron is still there? Are we, uh, are we switching here? What's going on? I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, um, could be that they're trying to get their uh, icons uh, arranged as they jump back in. Uh, try to always sort of get together and always be uh, be the same icon. Or I'm not exactly sure, but I guess it'll be Hartson on Team One. Is that or are they trying to decide which team is supposed to play Green and Gold right now? Because I think there are supposed to be what three matches tonight or six matches tonight based on who plays who. Is that right? Uh, I'm not entirely sure how many matches. There are four teams, so I know there's at least going to be three. It might be four. I don't know if we're going to have a uh, a match for uh, third and fourth place. Ah, We'll see. <laughs> I, I imagine we probably will. So, it uh, looks like uh, new people are coming into the match, so they haven't actually... I think it might have been the, the wrong team joined this game. Uh, I know that there is another game that... Who was supposed to be streaming the other one? I think it was, um, it wasn't, it wasn't us. It was one of the other members of Immorals. Am I right about um, that? I, uh, not, I've, I've heard nothing of this. I don't know. Hmm. Um, I was under the impression that we were going to be casting all of them, but oh. I could be wrong. Oh, if that, if that's great, uh, hope you have a bottle of water next to you because we're going to be talking for a while. <laughs> uh, I do have some, uh, some rogue energy. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> That's a sponsor right there if you go to <laughs> I'm not going to do this on your channel no <laughs> um, but it looks like looking at the teams here I noticed something pretty interesting what? green and gold does have both uh, Rasa Rip and Dumbass now they have a bit of a rivalry going on yes they do it's a Hanzo rivalry and I know that Raza was spouting yesterday about how he went in and actually, uh, I think did they did like a like a best of five uh, elimination Hanzo versus Hanzo, and I think he got the better of Dumbass yesterday. So I'm not exactly sure how they're going to be together as teammates because they could be. Uh, they, <laughs> this is exactly what we tried to avoid. Exactly. So. Uh, okay. Um, now, one thing uh, I know that. Uh, both D uh, Dumbass and Raza have gotten the better of each other multiple times back and forth. I remember in um, the Oval match that we played against you guys, I do believe Dumbass got the better of Raza on Hanso in that match. Yes, he absolutely did. But I'm I'm imagining a, uh, a Gimli Legolas situation here in this match where they're basically talking on their channel, like trying to one-up each other as they're trying to kill everybody on Team 1. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that absolutely, honestly, I, I I could imagine that happening. So it looks like on the other team we have a mix of uh, I recognize the names: Kokoya, Yuri, Hands, Aaron. Um, definitely uh, veterans of Division Six as well as the Scrub Cup. So this is going so to be a good match. Aaron is actually the newest member of Immorals. He's our newest uh, Sombra main. Uh, oh. Look at that. Well, yeah. We're going into the profiles here. So current competitive season, 2641. Very good stats. And also a Tracer player, I see. Oh, yeah. He's a very good Tracer. He actually completely kicked my ass on Tracer in 1v1s. Interesting. So uh, going to see a lot of sort of diving into the back, I think. Uh, I feel bad for... <laughs> it might be actually Rangrith because uh, he's a true flex at at 3,000 right now, and he plays pretty much everything, so it'll be interesting who plays uh, who plays the Mercy on green and gold. 
Uh, but I figure Aaron, if he's going to be player Tracer or Ensemble, is going to be in the back line a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, I imagine uh, Rasa is probably going to try to... to shoved up mass on that mercy since that is what he played in the uh, in the scrub cup <laughs> well raza has uh, actually sort of transitioned over to playing a zenyatta and has practiced uh, and Ooh. has done a lot of shot calling for us uh in our tournament matches so uh raza did all of the shot calling pretty much uh during the quarters and the semifinals uh for the university league so we might not see, we might see them switch either or on hanzo but i you could theoretically see both Dumbass and Raza on supports today, which would be very interesting. That is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, one thing to note, speaking of shot calling, um, Aaron being the newest member of Immortals, we haven't played with him much. Uh, we did sort of one um, scrim with him to sort of see if he fit, but I played some comp with him alone, and he does seem to be very uh, good at shot calling. He's, he's very good at uh, target calling and what exactly to do what to switch to for what situation. Ah, very nice. It's very unusual to see a shot caller from the front, though. Uh, usually, like, uh, a tracer player or a DPS player, is, it's rare to see uh, that come through. Usually it's always secondary de uh, secondary support or even possibly secondary tank uh, that does a lot of the target calling. So, interesting. Yeah, that that is exactly uh, the thing. When he plays Sombra, he is on point with his calling. I've not seen him try to call targets on Tracer, he was uh, stuck on tank a lot in the uh, games we did play, mm. tank or sombra. But uh, from what I did see, I feel like Aaron might be able to, to sort of take the wheel of this team and really just shine through. Well, well, that'll be uh, it'll be interesting. So I, I get to see him in action for the first time in a semi-competitive match. So this is going to be sort of going to be great for me. It looks like he also does not want to switch his logo as they all want to go one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> It could be he just does not have them. He's a very new player. He started playing the game three months ago, actually. Oh, so he really wouldn't have them. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, let me just let me just look. I, I feel like he probably has the one for for last season, but that might be it. Oh. Yep, he has uh, season five and season six, but that's it. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know. That's actually pretty. He's still season five and six, so. He'll, he'll be restricted as to what he, Marty Barter is going to have to switch. Uh, Kokoya's <laughs> been there from the beginning, and so is Jive Turkey, it looks like. so. Um, and they're still waiting on the last team member. So let me let me figure out what they want to be called here. So um, I'm going to... Or I'm going to give them a name, and they're just going to have to take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, Rangrith already saying that he's afraid of what Yuri Hands is going to do to him. Uh... <laughs> Yuri Hands is very, very good at uh, a very a lot a uh, a lot of tanks. Uh, Diva, Winston, Reinhardt, uh, and with Rangrith knowing that he might go Genji, uh, the tank might be sort of focusing on him uh, because he's so squishy. So, yeah, be, yeah. Uh, that's uh, that's a very good point. Yeah, so. um, I I do feel like. This match is, uh, it, it could go either way. Uh, I've not seen much of uh, these teams, obviously, but um, both teams do have some very good players. Uh, I know Kikoya, uh, a previous Immortals member uh, before my time, she is a very, very good Saria player. So we're definitely going to see some Saria this match, which uh, which could be very, uh, very interesting. If Eren does also run Tracer, we could see some really good... Uh, pulse bomb combos coming out there. Yeah, that would be really nice to see. I, I love those uh, those big bang combos that come through. Uh, also, playing with the uh, if Yuri Hands ends up playing the Diva or the Monkey, uh, Kokoya will be very very useful uh, in a lot of sort of uh, monkey dives into the back. So, oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. But with the with the way that the uh, the Mercy changes have gone. Uh, and having a Mercy on your team playing Dive is a little harder nowadays. Uh, but uh, I still think that it's still going to be uh, still going to be done here, I think at least by one of the teams in one of these matches. Are we going best of three or best of five? Um, I'm not too sure. Let me, let me see if Hartson pinned those rules. Um, I am not entirely sure. Um... Last time we did these pugs, we did have um, 
we we had a, a set map uh rotation mm -hmm. we did four maps exactly yeah but now that it's more uh tournament rules ish uh i'm not entirely sure how we're going to be doing it uh, that... uh, we probably uh ask hartson before we start <laughs> yeah I guess he's now tournament director. Is that basically what his now his role is at this point? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Hart Hartson's uh, sort of like the, uh, the 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 main man for these pugs. He sort of assigned himself that role. Ah, he keeps himself busy. That's for sure. Jumping from you all guys, <laughs> you guys know that they're supposed to play Eichenwald for the first game, right? Uh, we do not. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. we don't know the okay. rules though. We were actually just about <laughs> this to ask. Comp rules, just standard comp rules. Okay, so uh, but how many matches are they doing? But okay, so who do you guys have in your lobby? Two and four, right? Okay, so um, two and four play on Eichenwald. Then whoever's your second match, I already forgot. I think it's us and four or something like that. They play Li Zhang. And whoever's in the third match plays Dorado. So everybody's playing one map each, but they're playing on set maps. All right. Okay. So is is it just one game, or is it like yeah, a best? Yeah, it's of just one game. Oh. It's just one game because I don't expect people to have time for like more than four maps. Oh, okay. Okay. You should you should probably write that down. I absolutely uh, okay, I'm did. Going to, I'm <laughs> going to. I'm going to go type it into uh, team chat as well. All right. Okay. Later. Wonderful. See you later. All right, so uh, this match will be Eichenwald. Uh, good to know. Do uh, should we like sort of uh, should we sort of flip a coin to see who gets to be uh, who gets to call offense defense because there is an advantage playing defense on Eichenwald first. That might be a good idea. Yeah, let's uh, let's tell them we're gonna flip a coin. I actually have a uh, a certified Pokemon coin somewhere around here. Let me see if I can find it real quick. <laughs> We can make it very, very official. There, um, there we go. Does not look like I can find it. Oh no. Okay, I have another coin. Hold on. I'm gonna flip a coin. Mm -hmm. uh, have the team call heads or tails. All right. So I will tell them now. Um, I will say team member. Like. Since it is a pug, uh, I'm not exactly sure if they're gonna know what <laughs> if they're going to know if this is going to be as important as they think it is. Uh, uh, Lunar Slayer calls tails. Okay. That was for green and gold. Actually. That was that was green and gold that called tails. <laughs> um. I, I guess. Oh, Kikoya, okay. Kikoya, Kikoya Kikoya calls, calls tails. Tail. Let's see. Tails never fails. Mm-hmm. It is Tails. <laughs> and I'm giving Kokoya the option. And so we will get to see uh, if we don't take compliments from the other team. Uh, so now that it is Tails, Kokoya's team will have the option of being offense or defense first. Uh, I hope he saw Kokoya goes offense. Really? That's an interesting choice. Hey. All right. Well, I guess we'll switch the teams. All right. Move swap all. So I Remember just, to change the names. Is there a thing specifically for the names, or is that, or do I have no, to retype it? Unfortunately. In? Yeah, it sucks, doesn't you it? You do have to retype it. <laughs> Copy paste is very good for that. Yeah. But luckily. Uh, the way I've done the uh, the scores, uh, the score names, uh, because you'll see it in the in the channel once it's live, is that it's a scrolling score in the yellow border above the bottom. So therefore, I don't actually have to change anything except the score on the bottom, and makes it a lot easier uh, for me to uh, to keep track of everything. So uh, I oh, yeah. I plan on in, I I plan on basically giving this out to everyone so that we as these pub games become more and more sort of regular mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that everybody can sort of have a default sort of scene uh, that they can use for all of this stuff. So hopefully it'll become a regular thing. So, hopefully. Yeah. All right. Uh, just going to try to make sure that everybody's ready. Um, looks like everybody's here. Team names need to be switched. Yuri hands. Uh, uh, oh. According to chat, it seems you are streaming in IRL. Am I, whoa, 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 how does that? Okay, hold on. How does, <laughs> I don't, 
So how do what is going on there? So hold on. Uh, yes, you are streaming in IRL. That is not good. So, <laughs> so should, I should probably switch that honestly. But I'm not since the the stream has already started. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'm you not, should definitely switch it to uh, playing Overwatch. All right. Yeah. So. If you have a Nightbot in your chat, you can just do exclamation mark game overwatch. Okay. I do have video manager. I do not have that. So let me see if this setting. I don't know how to, I don't know even know how I understand how I ended up getting into IRL. Would I have to restart the stream to actually get this into, into gaming? Uh, nope. Just go to your dashboard and set the game to overwatch instead of IRL. Oh, I see. Okay. So I'm in my dashboard now going into the settings. Uh, hold on, it's live and interesting category. Huh. You know what it was? Is I was live streaming from BlizzCon. Oh, I so see. So that's probably what happened now. Uh, so what what probably did it was I was on my phone live streaming from BlizzCon, and that uh, basically changed my status to an IRL streamer. I think. That would make sense. Now, that should have done it, but it still says I'm streaming in IRL. But, game. I cannot do exclamation point game. Okay, let me let me check your stream real quick and see if we are good. All right. You do appear to still be in IRL. Hmm. Let's I see. think you may have accidentally set your community to Overwatch instead. Oh, hold on. Let me Let me see. Or did you remember to hit save? I did hit save. I said update information. Let's see. Let's see. Update the information. Error. Could not update stream information. Very oh, there you go. You are in game Overwatch. Now. Oh, there we go. Hey. We, we should be good. All right. All right. Now let's get back to the game here. Tell me if they're actually ready. Team's ready? I just ask. Let's see what they say. Uh, it seems like. I need to just switch the names real quick of the... All right, so team names, ready, 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 thank you. All right, we're ready to go. All right. All, All right, right, let's go. All right, here we go. All right. What do you think is going to come out here for either team based on the players that you see on both sides? Well, I, I'm i certain we're at least going to see one Hanso of, of uh, the blue team here, green and gold. Um, they are already locking in here. I, I'm i pretty sure we're going to see a very, very tight match. These players are all very good from what I have seen. So I'm sure it's going to be an interesting one at least. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, I don't think we're going to see any too many surprises. I think we're going to see some uh, favorite picks here. What I am interested in seeing is who's going to be playing uh, what healer. So I, I, as I, as I thought, Raza is indeed going to the to the Zen. So he's going to be shot calling, I think, on the side of green and gold. And it looks like we have a pause being called here. Okay. Uh, oh, never mind. Uh, Apparently, we are good. All right. Wait, we're good. All right. All right. See, I always panic. There was a game with uh, Overwatch team where a p where I was actually the host, and a pause cost us a map. So, that oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was not good. Or we would have we would have taken. Oh okay, uh, pause. All oh, right. Pause. Okay, control. There we go. Now, uh, while we are paused, I guess we can talk about what the uh, the teams have selected here. Yeah. Uh, so. Look, hold on. It looks like they want to restart the lobby. So, oh, right. I guess I guess we'll do that. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, all right. Let's restart the match. Ooh. <laughs> I think what I probably ended up happening here is because of the. Now arriving at no, that's oh. not not wrong. <laughs> 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 so I have to set the maps all off back to Eichenwald. Now I do find it very impressive that uh -huh. it did randomly select Eichenwald for the first one. Yeah, that I think the map they were supposed to play. All right. So, 
All right. um, now, something that did happen to green and gold, it looks like they did have a player disconnect and another player join in. Um, I'm not sure if that was an intentional substitute or if they are getting Lunar back. It's possibly because of the connection issues. So, like, um, so I'm not exactly sure what uh, is going on. As with uh, Pug Games, it is always a bit of a struggle here to try to figure out uh, like team experiences. Like, uh, if they're playing for the first time, people don't really know if. Uh, if people's connections are stable or not. So uh, when you get to play with somebody for a long, long time, you know, hey, you know, Roz is playing from Australia. His ping is going to suck. So we have to give him a little bit extra time. Or uh, I know that uh, uh, if we're playing with like Yeezy and Shadowcat, who have a tendency to share connection, uh, they always restart their routers before games uh, because they're playing in the same room uh, and uh, they don't want to have uh, crazy lag spikes because they're sharing the same Wi-Fi. So little things like that when you get to play with teams. So with pugs and stuff like that, it's always interesting to see like disconnects and stuff. It's going to happen all the time. People are just not going to know. So interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right. uh, last pug, it did go over pretty smooth, thankfully. Uh, the only reason we did get subs in, it was for people who did have to go because it was pretty late and did go on for quite a long time. But internet wise, we were thankfully good. Yeah. So we're just going to be waiting here for this last sub, um, but I'm not exactly sure. Is that somebody that's not... Oh, there we go. Lunar it Slayer. looks like Lunar Slayer did come back. There we go. Um, just checking in on him. It uh, looks like... It looks like teams are ready. Okay. So, okay. All right, and then we're going to start again. And I, I can, guess so. I can vault it is. Let's... Uh... Let's pray to R and Jesus that it works out this time. <laughs> uh, so I've got to be att pay attention to the pauses because I really do not want to miss them at all. Um, it's going to be super important. I don't want to mess, mess up the game experiences for everyone. I don't think we're going to have very many changes. We saw what the initial comps were pretty much. I don't think uh, people are going to be uh, changing from what we saw. So. And speaking of those changes, or sorry, those comps, Looks like we're going to have Jive Turkey running that soldier, Kikoya on the Saria, Aaron on the Tracer, Yuri Hands on the Mercy, uh, Marty Barter on the Reinhardt, and Ruin on the Lucio. And as for Green and Gold, we're going to have Rangareth on the Soldier, Rasa Rip on the Zenyatta, Dumbass on the Hanzo, Lunar Slayer on the Reinhardt, Squiggy on the Mercy, and Shapular on the uh, Saria. Yes, I'm seeing balance on both sides. Nothing really too crazy here. Um, I'm I'm interested in seeing how Aaron survives it because I think he's going to have a distinct advantage with only a soldier and a Hanzo on defense here. Uh, it looks like Jive Turkey did just switch to the uh, Genji. Oh, and now back to soldier. Can't really decide. Yeah, I think that I, just the way the, the map dynamics work here, it's going to be interesting because a Genji can get around fairly quickly and around the map into really, uh, really interesting spaces. Soldier will be playing mostly front line behind a shield, so they're going to probably see how it goes. Yeah, I think Soldier is probably the uh, right choice for them here since they are running the Rhine. Now, following Aaron here into battle, it looks like he is going to go uh, around the long way for a bit of a flank, see if he can get a healer. Poking a bit of damage into the Rhine there. Doesn't seem like they've noticed him yet. He's going in, jumping around. He does run into the Hanso there. Gets a bit low. Jive Turkey getting at the early pick there. Looks like a member is uh, sort of a... Uh, getting the uh, the the first initial picks and that oh my god that is it that's, that's it, all it took. yeah that was a very very easy push by a team member uh really they just sort of overran them there really wasn't anything too complicated about their push in and they just got uh it looked like just green and gold just got overwhelmed and as soon as they got two picks that was it for uh for member they just ended up taking the point Okay, so we're following Dumbass here. It looks like he's sort of having a one-on-one a, a -on -one battle with a Lucio right now. And oh, oh, that is that is unfortunate. Yeah, it's very unfortunate, falling into the hole right there. 
And uh, it looks like the uh, initial engage here is starting for uh, their green gold. And Rankrith already getting a bit low, having to pop his healing station, while Aaron is still just very much so, just poking damage. It looks like, oh, down goes Rangrith as well. Uh, every pick just still going in favor of team member here. Uh, it looks like Dumbass has switched off to that Junkrat there, sort of spamming mines on point, hoping for the best. But in comes a Pulse Bump, doesn't get anyone. Uh, looks like, oh, an Earth Shatter coming out. Uh, getting, somehow not getting Junkrat, but all the other picks in the world for team member here. Just, green and gold is just having to, to back off in, just indefinitely. Uh, okay. Looks like that's gonna be it. Yep, that's it. And I think Lunar Slayer is there sort of holding off whatever he can, but I think it's a, it's a losing fight. But no, they're still going here. Yeah, it looks like Rangrith coming in with that ult there. See if he can get anyone. He does get a pick on Yuri hands, and down goes Jive Turkey as well. Ruin. Everyone is just falling. Looks like green and gold took this back somehow. That that was interesting. I didn't. I thought that was really just going to be a solid second point push, but uh, gotta give, give kudos to Lunar Slayer there for sort of stalling them long enough when they had the spawn advantage there, and basically all of them came out at the same time and just sort of pushed them off. So that's going to buy them some time here on the bridge, but they've got to kill about 3.45. So. Now, falling Jive Turkey, it looks like he is going in for some poke damage there in the back. Runs into Rangarith on the top, taking him down with the help of Aaron. Just, oh, Dumbass getting the uh, the pick on the support there. This is going sort of back and forth. Looks like... Oh, I'm not quite sure what's happening. Oh, Dumbass goes down. Uh, looks like it is going in favor of team member though, but no, no, green and gold just taking back already, okay. Yeah, I gotta give it to Squiggy there. Squiggy was very, very good, right on top of the res, making sure that people were sort of topped off at the door. This walk is brutal for uh, team member here because they've got, they've got, uh, it takes about 15 seconds to even engage into a fight, even cutting through the castle. And basically the team has just such a small area to defend against that it makes it really, really hard to sort of pick off anybody correctly without exposing your entire team to a, a defense that's basically ready to sort of shut you down. So it'll be interesting to see what member does here now on their engage. Okay, so it looks like member is going in. Kikoya does drop early but gets resurrected, but looks like the, the, the picks are coming in favor of uh, green and gold once again. And it, the push is seemingly already over once again, just not really getting anywhere. Yeah, it looks like the uh, what it was is the big Earth Shatter came in from Lunar Slayer there, really caught the back line and didn't really allow them to have a clean engage. That ended up costing a uh, team member there, and now they're having to come back again, but this payload is backed up all the way back to the second corner. Now following Aaron into the action here, looks like he is going for some, some poke on the soldier there. Not really getting very far. Uh, payload is still pushing though. So, it's not all lost for a member. They do drop the sound barrier. Looks like Aaron just keeps going into the back, drops the pulse bump, does get the pick on Rasa Rip, but Rangrith coming out with his uh, uh, his visor there, but gets knocked down by the Rhine. And another ultimate coming out, just every ult in the game being used, picks back and forth. This could go either way, but it looks like once again, green and gold holding strong on second point here, okay. They look sketchy at the at the first point, but they've basically shown their worth here on the second point. They haven't given them an inch. Uh, that pushback uh, of the payload back to where it was originally where they got it from was uh, was all they got. They Again, they were blowing alts left and right, but there was just a little bit lack of coordination from, uh, from team member here that allowed the opening for green and gold to basically hold them off, pay a, take off, uh, kill the right people, and then now... Uh, they've killed all the time that, that the bonus time that they had and now it's down to 50 seconds and they've got to make this push work or that's going to be it for team member. Now it looks like uh, Soldier off of uh, Green and Gold there wants to take the fight up top but got caught off but down goes two uh, dumbass down goes two member members and that could be a deadly deadly stagger because this could be their last push. A big Grab comes out there from Kikoya, but just no follow-up, unfortunately, and down she goes. 
that was a desperation grab. I mean, like she needed, she wanted something to happen so badly there, but there was really no follow up and nobody left. Uh, so ten seconds left. I don't know if they're going to be able to engage. It does look like uh, Marty Barter here is trying to to come in for the uh, the desperation Winston hold on the uh, the payload, but. I'm not sure how much they're going to be able to do as their support has already been dropped and down goes their Winston. Uh, looks like picks are coming back and forth. Dumbass manages to kill himself somehow. But oh, out comes another ult from Rankrith just cleaning up floor. Just that, that might just be it. it looks like the only one left on point is the, uh, the Genji here and he's going to drop. There he goes. Okay, that's it. That is it. Very impressive uh, by the green and gold. Uh, on that second point defense. Just did not allow team member to do anything they needed uh, to get through that door. And Aaron commenting dumbass on his annoying junk rat. Uh, he, the junk rat was really a good counter for that tracer trying to hit into the back lines. It seemed like Aaron was having trouble with uh, traps and mines and just not getting the, uh, the attack that he needed to, uh, on the uh, supports to, to help out his front line and attackers there. So. Uh, Got to give it up to Green and Gold there for a good stout defense. Oh, absolutely, uh, dumbass! Again, I I played a lot of games with dumbass. He's he was on my team for the whole Owl season. He's a very very good junk rat. He knows where to throw his mines. He knows where to th uh, throw his traps. He's very, shall we say, map aware. He he knows where people are going to be coming from. Yeah, and with the buffs that came in with the last patch, Junkrat is so deadly for a player who is that aware. And you just saw it there uh, with Aaron just not being able to sort of penetrate the back line because of Junkrat basically pr uh, protecting oh, as much as like he did. Pause here. Oh, it looks like, okay. Um, and possibly some connection issues again with, with Lunar Slayer, maybe? Um, looks like. Well, let's. Uh... Let's take this opportunity to talk about what I'm seeing off of team member here. It looks like Aaron has uh, picked that Sombra there that I was talking about. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Uh, there are about, I want to say there are two, uh, there are three actually, uh, sort of health packs right there that and Aaron could control, but the problem is that two of them are on the the sort of the attacking side. So uh, the one that the one that is really useful, I guess, is the one on the right in the building that's on the other side of the wall. But it's a mini health pack, and the the two on the the two on the attacking side is there's one a major, and then there is a sort of a minor health pack on the right. So it's going to be interesting how those are going to be controlled by Aaron. Uh, but a Sombra here is very cool because I've never seen really uh, a Sombra on defense for Eichenwald really uh, used correctly. So I'm interested how this goes. Oh, looks like they're ready now. Um, yeah, just uh, one extra thing on Aaron. Uh, I have obviously since he, he joined our team, I've talked to him quite a bit, asked him how he plays. And the way he usually does play his Sombra is... He'll hack a health pack and sort of play around it and uh, keep poking damage until he builds his EMP fairly quickly. And then the team can just sort of clean up even if the team itself isn't playing around his health packs. So I do have faith in Aaron in that he could probably make Sombra work on basically any map. Yeah, so like the, the key is being able to get that EMP up for every fight. Uh, the, the pro class Sombras uh, usually will have those, that EMP ready on almost every engage which is amazing to sort of see, but it's it's all really dependent around uh, the team also coordinating and playing around that health pack properly. But here they come. Following Rangareth, once again, going for the uh, the back line there, the flanker. Rangareth does seem to have an interesting tactic. He's going all the way behind. Very, very interesting. I taught him that. Looks like, <laughs> oh, unfortunately, the Sombra does already fall down. Rankrith in the back sort of poking at the healers here, but the whole team is now aware of him and he's sort of behind enemy lines. Not much uh, much leeway, nowhere to really run. But it looks like the team is pushing in off of that distraction and the picks are coming in. And it looks like already 
uh, green and gold might be taking the point. Yeah, and you know that early kill on the Aaron was so big, uh, just not being able to be to able set up this Sombra because it it's almost as if like you you need that time to get the the health packs and the the teleports ready back so that you can actually build up that EMP. But being picked off so early, it just didn't allow. Uh, for him to set up, and then with Rangrith in the back picking off the supports and just being a just general nuisance, uh, they had to sort of fall back, and uh, that was it. Green and Gold got a great push off and the immediate take on point one. Yeah, uh, look, Member is going to have to really hold strong here. Now, Aaron is sort of going after the Junkrat here, and it looks like he might actually just be taking him down, and there he goes. That could be a very huge pick as the uh, the Junkrat was sort of the, the main issue for. Uh, for the team last round. So him going down could mean that uh, the, the flankers such as Aaron here can really shine as uh, there's no real map control. All the picks in the world just coming out for Member here. It looks like the push is sort of already over and Member might be just taking the hold here at the first choke. Ah, they were able to coordinate properly. Good use of the Earth Shatter there by Marty Breaker. Uh, Marty Barter, excuse me, uh, that just basically trapped the team against the payload and it just didn't allow them to move everywhere. So if they can get this defense right right here, it can be very, very frustrating uh, for Green and Gold to be able to sort of push through. Now it looks like the, the fight is starting again here. Sombra does have her EMP, but there out comes so many ults. Good l Oh my god, Jive Turkey with the, the combo grab there. We did also have a Transcendence coming out from Raza Rip, but to no avail, the whole team just dropped. But unfortunately, the EMP was also used for not not much reason there, so that's, that's kind of a huge um, loss for them. Yeah, that was a big loss. They, they overlapped the ults a little too much, uh, but, you know, Transcendence does not stop burst damage, and that's exactly what that Pulse Bomb is. So, uh, as long as she got a good stick, she was going to take people out, and that's exactly what happened. Now, in they come again. Looks like Marty Barter is going to try to sort of push uh, the Lunar Slayer away, but just gets caught off by Rasa Rip. More picks coming in left and right. At Earthshatter coming out from Lunar Slayer, not really getting much. Did get the uh, the, the Mercy there, I do believe that was. Uh, Kikoya just sort of having to, to run away, but down she goes, and that might just be it. Like, that's, that's a lot of free push they're going to be able to get here. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna be able to take this around the corner and onto the almost onto the bridge. It looks like, and they're split spawn pretty badly. Kakoya uh, ended up. Oh, oh good hook! That uh, was an, an an amazing hook off of Shapular there. Shapular also taking out the the Senyata. That is absolutely massive. Both supports being down. And it looks like Jive Turkey is gonna try to hold on cart here, Let's sort of only being contested by a very slow Roadhog. But the whole team's coming back now. But that stagger is pretty good. Dumbass coming in with the tire there as well, sort of just to finish off Jive. Out comes an EMP. Let's see if the team can finish them off with that. Looks like Aaron did manage to kill himself as well. A bit too slow on the uh, the, the teleport there. Getting very close to the end of the line here. Uh, Rowan does take out Shapular, but getting rest immediately and just very messy fight right now. Alt's being used left and right. There is another pulse bomb there from Jive. Uh, looks like the picks are going in favor of green and gold. Yeah. Aaron looks... killing himself once again. That's it. Okay. That's it. That was that was an interesting game. That was it seemed very one sided after the uh, the first initial push there. It looks like green and gold really just shined through you know what happened there at the end is uh it was basically the stagger kills ended up uh dooming team member uh they were holding out so well on the first point that when they started to retreat they needed to die as a team and when they didn't uh it really 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 sort of boned them on that second point defense because they were coming in about two or three at a time uh, because all the kills got staggered so badly and they didn't want to give them too much free push but by doing that uh, member ended up getting picked off you know 6v3 uh, and then it basically took them all the way to the very end where they could sort of hold off for you know one more fight but that ends up being it so absolutely um, honestly I feel like member might have been able to, to have that if they just sort of as you say stuck together and, and died as a team 
they did have a very strong defense and especially with the uh, the sombra emp if Aaron did um built that consistently for every fight i do feel like member might have been able to take that yeah i think you're absolutely right but you know this is the first time they've played together as a team and it is theoretically a pug so um the communication is key the team that's going to communicate the best is going to win these games and it looks like it was green and gold there uh after after that sort of shaky start playing on defense uh that sort of powered it through eventually and uh, they get the win yeah um now i'm not uh, sure which teams are going to be playing next oh hey I, i'm here i'm here to tell you uh tell kakoya's team that uh they are going to go to Echo's lobby and we're coming into yours. Well, they already left. They have already oh, gone. They? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well, invite us. We're all in a group already. All right. So I will invite Hearts in because I already did. Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, and, and I, you did. And I oh, already it didn't even bring me. <laughs> oh, why did you invite Pulse? I didn't invite Pulse. Did I invite Pulse? Somebody I did. I didn't uh, invite Pulse. Uh I'll remove him from game. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, what map are we playing next? Game Master Hearts? Li Zhang. It is Li Zhang. All right. Uh, and I assume it's comp rules, best of three? Yeah. Uh, no, we're going to do five. Oh, oh Scrub okay. Cup rules. Oh, I missed the Scrub Cup. <laughs> All right. So that requires a sort of change in the mode preset, I think. So let me see. So that is control. The salt. Nope, that is not assault. It is control. Um, so it is first to three. All right. All right. Well, what, what we do see here is uh, Sid and Hartson on the same team. That is a deadly combo. Sid is a very uh, aggressive D.Va player and followed up by Hartson's Ana. Hartson can just really build that nano just almost instantly. It's absolutely deadly. Yeah. Um, also, of course, we do have Safi. He's an excellent Lucio player, but he does also love some Symmetra, so we might see some Symmetra being pulled out here in this game. Oh, I love it. I love it. I don't ever get to see a Symmetra in actual competitive match, competitive matches, so I would love to see how a team, an organized team, deals with a Symmetra. It could go really, really good or really, really badly. <laughs> and, oh, absolutely. And it's just... Oops, oh, hold on. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Um, but now, the one player I really want to talk about here is Yukali. Now, if you do look at his career profile, you'll see something very interesting. He is a Masters player with the season high last season being 35-56. Oh, wow. So he, is, he is a Masters DPS. He is the uh, the coach of um, Couch Mongrels, which was Sid's Scrub Cup team. And according to Sid, in a training session where Yukali was playing Farah, he managed to single-handedly wipe their team of six on Farah. By himself? By himself. <laughs> so that is, that's a very scary player to be playing against for green and gold. Oh, Jesus. So on green and gold, who has the highest SR on the team? Because I know that Rangrith is at 30,000, but I'm not sure about anybody else. Uh, Lunar Slayer is at 3,115. So they do have two diamonds on the team. I'm not sure where everyone else is. I know um, Roz is 2600. Uh, Squiggy is... Uh, Squiggy is around gold. Yeah. Uh, Shapular is gold, I know, because he was in Scrub Cup. Uh -huh. uh, Dumbass is currently gold, I do believe. Although on his alt, he is plat. Oh, it looks like he has dropped to silver, unfortunately. Mm. But on his alt account, he is a plat player. Oh, there you go. He's just been having some bad luck on his main. <laughs> bad luck is what uh, happens to everyone uh, when solo queuing, unfortunately, if that's what he's been doing. Uh, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, solo queue is basically a coin flip. It is, absolutely. You heard the story about Razarip, basically, uh, excuse me, not Razarip, Rangrith, uh, needing about 100 SR, and it took him seven hours to go from 2,900 to 3,000, which was insane. <laughs> Um, it's, a, it's a control point, so I don't think we need to do a coin flip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> I, was, I, I was not paying attention to the map. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> well, it looks like Safi's going to the bathroom first, so we've got some uh, 
oh, we've got some time to kill here. Uh, well, you know what? Let's mm. just do the coin flip for fun anyway. Cool. What, what do you call Hoat? I call heads. I always call heads. Let's see. Oh, it is actually heads. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right. I guess you get to pick casting or not casting. Uh, <laughs> I will pick uh, color commentary. How about that? <laughs> okay. That works for me. <laughs> All right. So. Well... Uh, let's let's talk about the game then while we're waiting. I honestly, I don't want to be uh, I don't want to pick favorites, but I do believe that um, F O O W T probably does have the advantage here with that uh, very very talented masters player plus the uh, the combo of uh, Sid and Hearts could be very deadly. I've seen it plenty of times. So, but I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, they just who did they just play? Um, did they win their game? I'm wondering if uh, if F O W T won the match that they were playing on the other channel. I'm not sure. Um, we probably because I think what is it is uh, the the team that wins two will go on to the final game or like every team plays oh uh, every every team plays each other once and then the best two records go to the final. Is that right? I I think it's just everyone plays each other once and then the best team wins or goes to the finals oh i'm not sure oh okay uh someone in chat asked golden savior says uh what are the rules for putting together a team and um to that it is random that's uh, it's a pug a pickup game where everyone sort of throw th throws their name into a hat and uh just chance of random draw for your team <laughs> so it's semi-organized uh semi-not but it's fun because you're playing with people who absolutely want to win. So therefore, there's no throwing in any of these matches. So you don't get that aspect of competitive play, which is what we're trying to prevent uh, in games Hopefully. like this. <laughs> Hopefully. Who knows? Somebody might get tilted and just start jumping off cliffs. Uh <laughs> <laughs> well, dumbass did uh, jump off a cliff in the, uh, in the last game, so you never quite know what happened there. Yeah, I and I actually, uh, actually got to him exactly as soon as you said he did it, so... Uh, that infamy <laughs> has been recorded on the stream. So um, it's almost as if uh, when we were going through the uh, quarterfinals and the semifinals of the Overwatch League, uh, uh, Archimus had a tendency to charge off cliffs, and a great compilation of hip and cliff charging uh, was made and was uh, used as a rallying cry for the Beehive. <laughs> so very, very funny. Uh, looks like Hardsen is ready, so I just need to make sure that uh, Green and Gold are also ready. Um, and we're gonna get started here in a sec. I think just one. It looks like yep, we're gonna go. It's best and of five. Yep. Yeah, let's uh. Brace yourselves for a very long match, as best of five usually is. It absolutely is, and especially with the mercy changes, these fight extensions can go for a long, long time, uh, especially when a team is trying to stall. So it's definitely something we're going to have to sort of be careful about as casters. Absolutely. Um, now, Lee Jiang Tower is a very uh, popular Farah pick. Which does not look good for green and gold, as Yukali, the Masters player, is a Farah Tracer main. Mm. So, we're definitely going to see some deadly, deadly Farah coming out this match. Yeah, and I, I, I worry for G and G because I'm looking through the lineup here, and I, Rangrith and Raza aren't necessarily hit scan players. Dumbass is going to probably have to pick up the slack when it comes to that. Rangrith does play Soldier. But with Yukali's expertise on Farah, that could be a real, real problem. We'll have to see how it plays out. As for team compositions, looks like we have Hartson on the Senyata, Yeezy on the Tracer, Safi on the uh, M uh, Winston. I was about to call him uh, Minston for some reason. <laughs> uh, Sid on the Roadhog, uh, Nagato on the uh, Mercy, Yukali on the Farah, and for green and gold, we have Rangrith on the Soldier, Rasa Rip on the Lucio, Dumbass on the Junkrat, Lunar Slayer on the Rhine, Squiggy on the Mercy, and Shapular on the Roadhog. Oh, 
So it just looked like uh, there's been a switch. Uh, I think Yeezy was the one who switched to Soldier. Yeah. I think they're they're trying to be careful here that uh, the other the other team doesn't have hits uh, doesn't have a Farah either on this map. Now following Yukali, looks like he's going into the back line, gonna uh, catch uh, Rankrith off. Uh, sorry, what's it called? <laughs> I'm forgetting my words. Uh, off guard here. Squiggy going in for the res, but might get shut down here. Picks coming out left and right. Could go either way. Looks like. Uh, the point is taken by uh, the green and gold uh, early on here, which is not very good for FOWT. But picks are coming in on their side now, so we'll have to see what happens here if they can finish the rest of the team off fast enough. Yeah, and that that was pretty clean. Uh, Yukali picked off Rangrith that was big and then was able to just sort of get to the back line here. The engage has started again. Two more picks coming out from FOWT. Uh, Yukali just got a bit low and has to retreat as three picks does come out from green and gold. Looks like they're going to be holding strong for now. Sid does go in in a last-ditch effort here, but does get shut down. And that's it. Okay. Oh, wow. That, that's pretty crazy that, like, you know, it seemed to me the control was going to be going with... Uh... Uh, with FN FOWT, but it looks like the it's going to be a solid hold for green and gold here, and they're already up to 50%. It's pretty nuts. Yeah. Uh, just getting that, that early um, control of the point really does mean a lot as the fights drag on. Looks like Sid is going to just uh, charge in here. Uh, Yukali getting the pick on Shapular with the... Uh, the, the boop there and a massive ult getting three people and a fourth there and that's it that was an insanely fast take for FOWT okay yeah they didn't have anything to really cover GNG did uh, and basically Yukali just went on a killing spree and just sort of wiped them all out uh, you know uh, no shields there for for green and gold for to prevent that uh, that barrage to come in and it was just death everywhere Ooh, that was very unfortunate. We just saw Rangrith pop his ult to immediately get shut down by Yukali on the uh, the Farah there. That's uh, that's wasted now with the uh, the newer changes. That's very unfortunate for them. Yeah, and Razorup got picked off too there by a, a rocket from Yeezy. That's a beehive on beehive killing there, and that basically ended the push right there. Uh, no res is coming out for uh, for green and gold, and that was sort of good saving that for the next fight. Oh yeah, and it looks like they are going to be trying to go back in. Sid does get demeched here and taken down. Shapular popping his whole hog, trying to push them all back. Uh, uh, looks like we do have a uh, Transcendence coming out there from Hartson on the FOWT side, but it's not going to do it as Green and Gold is getting all the, the major picks right now. And everyone is sort of off the point. Not much they can do. Diva Bomb does come in, does manage to pick up Rankrith, but the point does still go to green and gold. Yeah, and Sin's coming in here late, and that's not going to be good because they're just going to stagger her, look at her, just sort of hang out on the point. This is just evil. Oh, and she got her <laughs> Diva Mech back and they killed her. Oh, that's that so... That is unfortunate. Oh, no. But we're at 90% here, and they've got to come in, and they've got to come in now. Now it looks like Yukali is sort of flying around, toying with them a bit. Does get Rankrith down. Yeezy does take down Lunar Slayer, but not fast enough. Green and gold takes it. C9 there from FOWT. Yeah, they saw the Reinhardt up front and just got distracted with him charging in, taking out the monkey real fast, and they focused on killing him instead of getting to the point. Oh no! <laughs> and Lunar Slayer thought he was feeding! He thought he had made a mistake! Instead, he played the greatest sort of distraction in the world and it got him the first point. That's absolutely masterful play, even if it was on accident. That was very well played off of Lunar Slayer. <laughs> well, uh, let's see if FOWT can sort of make up for that map. Now, this is a big booping map uh, with the fact that the that the uh, center sort of pagoda here is surrounded by all of this water and uh, it looks like the only the only uh, Lucio that's going to be played is going to be on the side of FOWT so it, it, it does look like um, green and gold here are playing it smart and taking a, the fight inside the little room here 
since they do know that FOWT has the Farah, but Farah does still manage to pick off two people. And down goes almost Sid. Uh, oh, it looks like unfortunately Nagato does manage to uh, fall off a cliff here. No one really peaked the mercy there, but um, FOWT takes the point first. Yeah, very clean, and it looks like the fear of the uh, the Farah is very much deserved, as Yukale was doing so much frontline damage there, and just sort of trapped them in that room. That's like the sort of the uh, the the negative part about trying to like sort of be afraid of a Farah. You end up getting trapped in there, and if you're five on the ground or very good at engaging, which is what FOWT did, uh, you have nowhere to go, and it's going to be very very problematic now on the engage for green and gold. For them to sort of find a way onto the point without getting really, really like, like sort of hassled on the way there. Absolutely, and uh, looks like uh, green and gold are going in again. But Yukali is ready with that ult, and out it comes, getting shut down by Shapular. Though, what a shot! Getting rest. It looks like both teams are back to full here. Uh, down goes Rangareth though to Hearthstone. That could be a, a pretty uh, huge pick, as that's a, a DPS already down, but it does get rezzed. And all coming out from Shapular here, just sort of pushing everyone off the point. Safi just uh, flying around here as Lucio, just trying to stall it. Sid getting two people with her bomb, absolutely massive. And down goes Shapular as well, and that that's going to be it, probably. Yep, that is yeah, it. Yeah, you see Rangrith retreating. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he had to get the hell out of there because, like, uh, that bomb was positioned so well by Sid, it didn't allow Lunar Slayer to position his shield correctly, and it picked him off, and once you're frontline tanking, another person goes with you on a big bomb like that, it's over. And uh, they're already at 84% here. They've literally cut it down to one more push, and then if they don't get it here, it's over. Now, Yukali did try to go for the uh, the cheeky uh, concussion blast there, but unfortunately didn't really get anything. Uh, two alts coming out from uh, green and gold here. Looks like they're getting a bit desperate. They do manage to get some picks, but picks coming out from FOWT as well. But it looks like they do take the point with 99% remaining. FOWT just needs one push, really, and that's going to be it. Oh, great hook there by Shrapular at the very end to just sort of take out Yukali, who could have maybe sort of stalled a little bit on the point, but now it is FOWT's turn to see if they can engage and take this point right back. Um, it looks like all the spawns are back for uh, for green and gold, and Dumbass has switched to the Widowmaker. Ooh, now that's an interesting choice. I do... Uh Occasionally have Widow 1v1s with Dumbass, and he's not a bad Widow. But uh, Yukali is also the kind of Farah who does get in Widow's face, not really giving her a chance. As you could see there, he did get in directly in her face. And it looks like FOWT might just take the point already. They have all the picks they need. Uh, Earth Shatter does come out there from Lunar Slayer, doesn't really get anyone, and down he goes. All the picks, and that might just be all she wrote. If they can get on the point, it looks like Dumbass is able to start overtime. But all the other picks coming out, I don't think they're going to be able to make it back in time. Nope, Tracer almost making it back to, to keep the overtime going, but not quite. Good job by FOWT after capitalizing on that mistake. We're getting a pause here. Uh, looks like Raza needs a little bit of time. Let's, uh, oops. Super high ping, and he's going to disconnect, and we're going to pause here at the uh, the game screen. And Yeezy saying, "Raza, rage quit." As uh, Yeezy's whole job uh, this entire match, as he has said, is to just kill Raza. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> one thing I, I do feel like I should mention is uh, this match does seem a lot less one-sided than I expected it to be. Uh, that last map specifically, it was kind of one-sided for the most of it, but um, just overall, the teams do seem pretty uh, pretty equal here. Yeah, which is uh, very interesting considering uh, they do uh, FOWT do have that masters player who is known to carry. Yeah, and uh, he showed his worth in this particular map, which is a big Pharah map, and there was no Pharah on the other side to sort of counter or maybe go against, and the it looks like Raz is starting back up again. Their uh, their hit scan just wasn't able to take Yukali down fast enough. Uh, it's a it's a tall order. Um, with Raza on the on the Zen, basically you keep the Discord 
on the uh, on the Pharah and you you sort of combine everybody's sort of focus on killing the Pharah, or you go the other way and just completely ignore the Pharah and just sort of try to kill everybody on the ground, and then once whoever's left uh, takes the Pharah out at the end. But with the skillful as Yukali is, uh, they. I don't think they were doing that at all, and they were trying to just sort of get him, and it just didn't work. And uh, he was doing a lot of frontline damage and taking people out at the beginning of fights, or taking shields down low enough so that it allowed uh, the rest of FOWT to sort of clean up, and that that was sort of brutal for GNG. Yeah, Yukali is definitely making himself known. He is not the kind of far that you can just leave until the end, and that might be where GNG are, are going wrong. Um, she doesn't seem to get uh, focused down a whole lot, but um, maybe they've learned their lesson from this map. Yep, and now we're going to go into Control Center. Um, so we're going to probably see Yukali stay on the Pharah, I think. Or no. I, I am wrong. <laughs> Is, That's uh, an interesting choice there. Well, you can do a lot of damage with uh, with Junkrat here, just because there are multiple levels, and you a Junkrat can attack from the top, he can attack from the back. Um, there's just a lot of ways to sort of spam the sort of center choke area, and it also helps uh, on the initial engages because this is one of those points that you definitely want to win first and fight uh, pushing into the other person's spawn. Absolutely. The fight is breaking out in the white room here. Looks like the picks are coming out for G&G &G right now. Uh, just not much uh, FOWT can do at this point. They only have two players left, so G&G &G are probably just going to take the point already. Yeah, that was a super clean engage. Sid is actually like trapped in the back. I hope they, under they know she's going to probably end up walking back to her spawn. Uh, but that's problematic. But, oh, gets back with the rest of her team. And uh, here, here comes GNG. They're just sort of pushing in, making sure that they don't get any clean engages here. Now, interestingly enough, you do see uh, Rangrith having switched to the uh, the Farah here after Yukali switched off, and not really anything on the side of FOWT that can deal with the Farah. But as I say that, down she goes. Both Junkrats getting two picks there, pretty massive. Uh, Earth Shattered does come out there from Lu uh, Hartson, and Lunar Slayer looks like both Earth Shatters, but. FOWT is seemingly taking it, and there they go. Yeah, we had a couple of, of roll switches here with Hartson going to main tank, uh, going on the Reinhardt. I don't think I've ever seen him play on the Reinhardt, but the switches worked as uh, as they were able to sort of clear out GNG. Yeah, and it looks like FOWT is going to take the fight straight to their main door here. Hartson getting taken out early, though. That's not looking good for FOWT. Uh... It does look like Sid's gonna try for that big bomb. Doesn't get anyone, unfortunately, and uh, G and G is really gonna have the advantage here with all the ults in the world and the early pick. And oh, the down goes everyone just at once. Two ults coming out though, and looks like no fight is still going. Down goes Hearts and Yeezy falling quick. Yukali left alone here and taken point by G and G. Yeah, uh, and it looks like they're getting some stagger kills here. Yukali got trapped in the back there and was taken out by Shrapular. They're, they probably want to wait for him to come back because they'll need that Junkrat's uh, additional DPS here. But I don't know if they should probably be in for some switches here because what they're doing is just is letting Rangworth go to town on them in just small spaces and they just really don't have anything to counter. Absolutely. Now, the fight going on again here. Sid does chase after Rangworth a bit. But uh, Rangrith just managed to get away and get healed up again. They, just, as she said, they just don't have anything that can really deal with the Farah. Uh, early pick coming out on Hearts in there. That's a main tank down and a DPS. This is not looking good for FOWT. Alt does come out. Doesn't get anyone. Just not Sid's map. No, and and she's gonna get she's gonna get staggered here again. They're just gonna let her sort of run around and. That is going to cost them five, se uh, five to ten seconds here, but they don't have enough time left. They're at 87%. This is going to be the last push. They've got to win this point here, or that's going to be it for this map. Now it looks like Yeezy has switched off to the Soldier in hopes to deal with the Farah, but it might just be too late. Uh, Lunar getting the, uh, the the snipe on Ryan on that uh, tire there, that's absolutely insane. And 
two picks coming out for Dumbass once again. He's really just showing his his absolute junk rat prowess on this map. Now picks are coming out for FOWT now. And looks like they might have the advantage for this map as not much is left on point here. Although, oh, oh no, no. An another C9. Oh, Hartson wasn't fighting on the point. He was just fighting on the fringes and he forgot oh to get God. on. <laughs> that is absolutely devastating. Another C9 for for uh, FOWT there. Yeah. Twice in one game. Oh, and that was just a slight error on positioning. They had that fight won and they were actually pushing them back. Oh no. So that, that is that is brutal. But thank God it's best of five or it would be over by now, and that would just be a horrible way to sort of lose it. Now it does look like we're gonna have uh, a double Farah here for once. But on the side of um of G and G here, they don't have a hit scan. So with the uh, the FOWT having both the Farah and the Soldier, they might have the air dominance here. Yeah, I don't know if this is a smart idea not going with the hit scan on that side because Yeezy is a great soldier and uh, Rangler's going to have his hands full trying to take him down. So, <laughs> here's the initial engage. Now, it looks like Yukali is going in and taking out Raza Rip already. That could be very big. Uh, I think both teams have already used their res by now. I'm not entirely sure. Yes, they absolutely uh, have. Now, it looks like uh, picks are coming out for both sides. Rasa Rip sort of getting caught off by the Farah here. Not much he can do, but just sort of run around. And down he goes, and both healers, and every pick in the world coming out for FOWT, and they're just going to take the point immediately. Yeah, Sid and Safi there went to town at the very end, just combining with Discord orbs and killing people. If he didn't have that, uh, that achievement, he got it now, because all of those kills were combined Diva Zen kills, so that was fantastic by FOWT. Uh, we're gonna get, we're gonna see some fair up bottling here because Rangrith is in the air with uh, with Squiggy and gets taken out. <laughs> now, it looks like Kali is gonna pop his ult there, not really getting much. Does get the pick on Shapeshular, but taken down by Rasa Rip. Rangrith also taking out the Mercy there. That could be absolutely massive. Yeezy does pop his ultimate, but all he seemed to get was one pick. That could be pretty bad for them. Picks are coming back and forth, not quite sure who's going to take this. It looks pretty even. Although, FOWT may come out on top here, but there comes a rip tire, and that might just be what uh, GNG needed. As they do have the majority right now, all that's left on point is uh, Soldier and D.Va. Oh my goodness. Although the Farah does come in again. It's a very messy fight back and forth constantly. But I do believe G and G have this taken. I don't know. It looks like the fight's still going back and forth. Hartson trying to take out Dumbass. And FOWT holds it. Unbelievable. That's very, very unfortunate there for G and G as a lot of time was wasted on that push. Yeah, they're stalling really, really well here, and what's going on is because FOWT has had control of the point this entire time, they're just building this percentage. Now, all it comes out for Rangrith does take out the Winston there, uh, Yeezy taking out the Farah, but the, the picks are just back and forth constantly. It's just no way of knowing who's going to win in the end. A huge all coming out there from Yukali, and that might be just what they needed. G and G are really on their last legs here and if they can't touch the point that that's gonna be it yeah that was a Work great last setting map that was a great stall uh done by fowt they basically just kept fighting on the point and they realized it's like well if they if they can't finish us off we'll just stay here and sort of wait this out and with a map like that it's like you have to finish off all your kills and that was what was not happening on the side of g and g and they just took it all the way, and Yukali with that ult at the very end sort of just cleared them all out, and uh, that's that. And now we're going to with the final map. Um, now this is this is a bit interesting. Um, so my uh, my camera seems to have just glitched out, and I'm on a completely different map. Uh, can we can we can we pause real yeah, quick? Yeah, yeah. Um, Caster pause. <laughs> 
Yeah, I I am currently on control center. Um, let me <laughs> let me just rejoin the game here. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's a very <laughs> weird bug. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, if, uh, if someone would invite me back to the lobby, <laughs> yeah, I will. Sh I will show the lobby now, and I will get you back into this game. Uh, uh, there we go. <laughs> so there we go you're back in now um, once I undo the pause let me know if it'll work if not we might have to pause again so I am uh, un yeah. undoing the pause so, so how are you doing you're still loading I take um, it so oh and here we go I am on the right map <laughs> all right the fight is going off it looks like uh, not much happening just as of yet Yeezy does manage to take out the um, Winston there. Looks like Sid is going in hot and heavy into the midst of the team, but this get d mech It's going to have to retreat here, but sort of getting chased around by uh, the whole team. And there she goes, just before she gets her mech. Pretty unfortunate. Does look like the picks are coming in favor of um, G and G here, but it's pretty even fight on point, and nope. It looks like FOWT might take this. Yeah, there and, you go. and they do. Uh, sort of like a just a giant brawl here on the point. Rangworth by himself, uh, that is not a good idea, and he comes up suiciding because he's not a geek, need to get back on his team. Just uh, it looked like the brawl was literally on the bridge with both teams sort of not sort of deciding to go through the small room, which, uh, okay, interesting. Sid just sort of falls um. off a cliff. Uh, <laughs> Well, and that's <laughs> just what G&G &G needed to initiate, and in they go. Lunar Slayer jumping into the front lines here, sort of just doing damage to everyone, not getting much done, is having to jump again, chasing the Mercy around now. Looks like Shapular coming in with a pretty big ult, as well as Dumbass, using two ults to take the point. They do manage to take it. Yeah, and um, I don't know if Sid was trying to be nice, or maybe just sort of... Uh, lagged out there, but that was very costly for FOWT, uh, just because that bec an Enviro kill just doesn't allow for a res, so uh, that's just going to give them some free time on the point here. Now, first initial pick does come out from uh, GG. The res is already down, but it looks like FOWT is going in. Hearts and popping off is all jumping into the back here, sort of chasing everyone around. Uh, looks like uh... Yeezy does get taken out as he's ulting, unfortunately. The fight is being taken on point now. Not quite sure who is winning as it's very back and forth, but it does look like G and G is going to hold this as all that's left on the point is Hartson. Yep. And, uh, you know, you had monkey ults all over the place. Both teams sort of blowing their ults, trying to see if they could seize control. And G and G basically just took it there. Uh, good positioning by them. They didn't allow themselves to get any enviro get enviro killed by the ulting monkey on the side uh, of G and G. So that was the difference. Uh, and here comes the engage again. They're ready to fight. Now Yukali is sort of going town, going to town here with the uh, the G and G guys, sort of just getting the poop on Shapeler there, and a massive ult coming out as well. The sound barrier has been popped for G and G, but just a bit too late as it looks like FOWT has already won this push. Yeah, that was a hard oh, carry there by Yukali and oh and it ju they just need to kill oh. <laughs> Please tell me you saw that shot on I, stream. That was absolute snipe. Yeah, absolutely. Rangworth trying to destroy the skid the ceiling and nope gets denied and the take there by FOWT. But they've got 87% here, uh, G and G. So like, they really only need to win maybe one fight, and they've got this. Now in comes G and G again. Shapular getting the early pick on both. Uh, no, sorry, just on Mercy and Rasarip getting the pick on Farah and Lucio. This could be just what they need. And looks like the fight has already been won. All that's left is Sid, and down she goes. No stagger for that diva. Yeah, they're they're going for a quick engage because they need to get back super quick. But I don't know if they're going to. We're at ninety three percent now. Yukali's got to make it back to the point, or they're just not going to be able to to win this pat. Ooh, that's a massive pick from Ross. Rip this take out Yukali and dead. That's it. They couldn't get back in time. <laughs> oh 
Oh my god. What a shocker. I was I was not expecting that. Yeah, what happened was is that 87% is the magic number on a lot of maps. If you lose a fight at 87, uh, there is literally, like, you need a tracer or an ulting monkey to basically get back on the point, or or a team is going to push up and stall you long enough, and you're just never going to get back. And that's exactly what happened to FOWT, and uh, they just couldn't get back in time. They had lost that fight, they had lost, they had actually died fairly quickly, uh, together as a team to give them that shot to get back, but it just wasn't enough, and um, that was huge. So it looks like uh, we're going to leave here, and that's it for this map. So that's two straight wins for the green and gold. Now, one thing I do want to bring up, I do believe that match could have gone very differently if uh, Sid had not fallen off the map for that one push. Yeah, and uh, Sid was very, very mad at himself. Uh, for herself for that. Uh, that, I think, was either some sort of lag issue. It couldn't have happened on purpose. There had to have been something that sort of contributed to that that didn't allow uh, for that to happen properly. So, uh, so, but it ends up with uh, Green and Gold getting uh, two wins in a row on ours, and now Team Member is coming back. And they, now, will, they will be playing FOWT. Now, I'm very interested to see how, how this is going to play out. Um, since we did see a uh, member playing earlier, I do believe FOWT, um, with uh, with their picks, might just uh, have the advantage over member, as um, member did seem to, to favor the, uh, the Genji and Tracer picks. Yes, they did. Uh, Absolutely did. FOWT does play the uh, the Faro. Yeah, so you know the Faro will have the advantage there, especially if a member is going to be going double, uh, double sort of uh, flankers here. So it's going to be interesting. Now you're going to have to flip a coin to figure out who is going to get defense and offense first. So uh, I'm not sure if uh, let's see, Kakoya and Marty Barger's team called it last time. So should we give it to FOWT to call, or uh, uh, should they decide among themselves? I, I already sort of typed it out. Oh, okay. There we go. Let's see. So let me, while well, that happens. Now they pick Tails. Let's see. Tails never fails, as they say. And it is Tails. All right. <laughs> Tails it is. <laughs> All right, so they get to choose. And they do pick defense. All right. All right, just fixing up my uh, here. So FOW picks defense or offense. Hartson plays defense. So we are set here. Um, and we're ready to go once both teams are ready. All right. So, um... This is Dorado, the map of high ground. So, I am slightly hoping to see some uh, some sniper plays here. I do always love me some Widow. I'm not sure um, who exactly on these teams can play Widow. I know Sid does like Widow, but uh, I'm not sure if she would pull it out for these maps. And it's good for both offense and defense. Uh, you can actually use an offensive sniper here, which is somewhat rare uh, to sort of pick off teams. But it can be done. So a defensive. Uh, so if uh, if member were feeling a little uh, a little finicky, maybe they get uh, somebody to play as a widow also. But looks like Kakoya is ready. Just making sure that FOWT is ready. Um, want to make sure. I haven't seen one. Just asking them real quick. All right. And the maps have been going fairly quickly here. We started at around, we started late. Uh, we had about uh, 20 minutes of setup, but we're only at 10.20 and we're already in our third match right now. So pretty good time this time. Uh, not staying too late for either team. So looks like Hartson is ready. So teams are set, names are ready, and off we go. To Dorado. Now, um, I do know that Hartson, for one, absolutely loves Dorado. I do believe it is uh, at least one of his favorite maps. So this is definitely going to be his uh, his hometown, Ah, shall we say. 
Yeah, and this it, it the initial push here, you can play a lot of things. Do you think possibly a team will be able to pull out a Bastion on the initial push? As uh, he has become in vogue lately on a lot of uh, sort of pushes on payloads. So Honestly, I, I do believe it could happen. Uh, I know Hartson is, again, Hartson, very, uh, very into the uh, the Bastion play on attack. Yeah. So I'm sure he's at least asking for it. Let's see if his uh, his team complies. But it does look like we have a Widow pick off of Jive Turkey on the uh, the member's defense here. Yep. No, sorry, offense here. Yeah, uh, and I thought something like that might happen uh, because uh, a Widow here can be useful on offense, especially in the first two points, just to position yourself away from the sort of the main fight and pick off flankers if they think uh, they're going to be flankers here attacking the payload. Uh, but nothing really too crazy on the side of either team. Um, looks like it's sort of like a modified frontline dive. It, it is for team member and uh, sort of like a shield comp. Uh, Zarya Reinhardt shield comp for uh, FOWT. Now, Yukali is on the Junkrat again, interestingly enough, not picking the Pharah. Yeah, I would think that, like, you know, he, he would want to play into that, but maybe, like, it's a good pick after all because Jive Turkey would have had a huge advantage there. Now in we go. Uh, let's see if Jive Turkey can get those important picks early on here. Sort of getting uh, cut off by the uh, the Reinhardt barrier there, but Yukali jumping in doesn't quite manage to get the pick on him, unfortunately. Uh, the rest of the team does uh, seem to be diving into the back line here. Not really getting much done uh, at the end of what I saw there, but they did manage to get two picks. That's pretty good. Cart is rolling and looks like they're already going to be through the first choke without much effort. Yeah, it looks like uh, it, uh, Jive Turkey did end up picking up Yukali there at the very end, uh, who was sort of holding up the Widow, and that was like the the, the pick that basically finished off the back line there, and now it's going to be tons of free push uh, for team member here. Now it looks like Yukali is on the Tracer, another one of his mains. He's going in pretty deep, getting a bit low recalling, but not enough. They do manage to get the first point. Yeah, and it was pretty easy, it looked like, too. Uh, good dive initially uh, by team member there to sort of dislodge that sort of top defense. And uh, they're just uh, not able here to sort of settle in and just sort of get a proper defense set, which is basically throwing off FOWT. Now, Yukali does get a pick on both the Widow and the Winston there. Pretty good for FOWT. The fight is still going on. FOWT is not seeming to retreat just yet. Looks like, uh, oh, the, the Widow does get the uh, the pick on the Tracer there. Yeezy just going off getting two again, and pretty back and forth, but it looks like FOWT might be holding. Oh, but an ult coming out from Kikoya does take out the support, but as Hartson also takes out the support for FOWT, I really feel like this could go either way, but probably uh, they should be uh, falling back a bit now. Yeah, it's the... Right now, it looks like they're going to fall back, and then they're going to get movement on this cart. Uh, they're really, really afraid of that Widow because of the way the positioning and the, and the kills have been going. So they're really just sort of playing a little defensive here, uh, FOWT, just sort of... But it's sort of like preventing them from playing a proper defense because they think their, their, their head's going to get blown off by Jive Turkey, who gets another kill on Yeezy. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like he's sort of just holding back the supports here. Not much, uh, not much, much healing they can do on the front lines when the the widow is sort of just holding them back behind the Reinhardt. If they leave for just a second, their heads are just gonna fall straight off. This is impressive here by Jive Turkey. Basically, just the threat of her trying to kill you is basically preventing them from setting up. So uh, they're gonna probably get the second point fairly easy. Oh, and he finally goes down to Yukali. Yeah, but Yukali left alone on point. Not much he can do alone when the, the whole team is seeming to, to fall back a bit to, to deal with him. He does get a Pulse Bomb stick on to Yuri Hands, which is pretty big. Uh, Diva Bomb also coming out using two alts here to try and hold them. Now, if I were uh, FOWT, I'd probably be falling back, but never mind. Yeezy with the triple high noon there. Perfect usage there, especially to end that push, because she had just popped Valkyrie, 
and uh, it was a great way to just sort of counter it right away and prevent a second push to start on the side of team member. Good job by Yeezy there with the triple kill. Now it looks like member is uh, setting up for uh, another push here with Jive in the back, probably trying to go for that um, that Mercy there if he can find her. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, the rest of the team going in, sort of fighting in the back line with the uh, the tracer here. Does manage to take out the uh, the mercy, but oh, and both supports going down to the tracer, and that's probably the push being over already. Yeah, Members you gonna have to retreat. Yeah, you probably did some work there in the back line, making sure that the supports didn't get anything in on the uh, front line on the front line at all, and. Uh, Jive Turkey gets picked off by Yeezy there in the back who had switched over to Tracer. So now they're finally set and uh, it looks like FOWT here will now pl uh, play the defense set up as the way they want it. They don't really have to be afraid of anybody else now because of the switch. So it's going to be interesting to see what member does here. Uh, they got it pretty far but they just got stalled out. It just looks like Kikoya did use her ult just to get her mech back there but Hartson does also drop so this could be pretty good for uh, for member despite being down that alt and another alt coming out taking out Safi, just using a lot of alts here for this. Not the probably not the greatest of ideas. So they're not really getting much push off of it anyway. Safi just sort of solo handedly holding the cart in place. As I'm not quite sure what's happening with the rest of the team. They were all dealing with the tracer in the back. And another Diva Bomb comes out to take two both supports, and that's probably it for member again. Gonna have to fall back and retreat. Okay. Yeah, that was huge. That was a huge kill by Sid. Uh, and member can't do anything about it now. They, I mean, like, as soon as both supports went down, they really had nothing that they could do to, to sort of push on. And now that we're down to about 45 seconds here, and uh, team member has got to make sure that they use their ults that they have. Uh, properly, but they're going into four alts here by FOWT. Now the fight coming off, picks left and right, and alt does come out from Yukali to take out Yuri hands, so that's another alt down there. Uh, looks like the fight is just sort of all over the place right now. Teams are a bit uh, scattered here, as Yukali was in the back lines, but now falling back to the, uh, the front lines again. Uh, sort of trying to deal with... Um, with whoever was in the air there. I thought it was Tafara, but I guess not, because she died to Sid somewhere else. Yeezy also does manage to take out the uh, the Lucio there, and the fight is just sort of in the uh, the favor of uh, FOWT once again. But Kikoya with a massive Tracer Bond there does manage to take out both uh, the, uh, the Mercy and the McCree, which could be just what they needed to get the cart rolling again. They just need to clean up the, uh, the Lucio and the... the, the uh, the Winston there holding the cart, and there they go. Sid going in, probably going to get staggered quite a bit here, not getting much with her bomb. And out of mech straight again, and down she goes, probably. Yep. She was stalling there, and she was waiting for the rest of her team to come, and they're on the other side of that wall here. They have to get there fast. They want to prevent this from getting all the way to the third point, but I think they might be giving it up. Oh, no. The, here comes Yukali. Yukali is going in for that stagger. Hartson following suit, and looks like the fight is being taken right here, straight before the last checkpoint. All uh, FOWT needs is just one wipe, and it's over. That's be it's easier said than done. Looks like they're <laughs> they're fighting tooth and nail here. <laughs> Does look like Member is probably going to be winning this push. The uh, the only one left is sit there and point and Yeezy up on top, and down they both go. And another minute thirty on the clock here for Member. Good job by them. They didn't. They didn't like give up on any of their pushes. They realized what they were doing wrong, and they adjusted properly. Now it looks like they're pushing up now, trying to trap FOWT back up on the point. They only have a minute on this push, so if FOWT can set up properly here, they're going to be able to sort of trap them in one of the hardest parts of Overwatch to get a payload through. So uh, it looks like uh, Kikoya and Aaron were trying to take the fight into the back line, not having much luck as Yukali to take the fight to the points. So they were having to retreat. Safi does get taken down, it's, uh, which does bring out the res, which could put FOWT at a bit of a disadvantage, but it looks like they're getting the picks, but nope. 
it's back and forth once again. Every fight this game is just very back and forth so far. Another alt coming out from Jive Turkey, taking out the uh, the Mercy there. It looks like they've won this uh, initial fight here on point, as no one's really left alive except for the uh, the Diva there, just running around trying to stay alive like a a, a chicken that lost its head. <laughs> but yeah, the fight's gonna end up going the way of uh, of the team member here, and they're just getting staggered here. One one, are, they're getting kills a little bit at a time, and it's just not helping them set up properly, and the the cart's still moving. Now Mercy dropping once again. Mercy is always just a massive pick to get early on in these fights, especially with the new rest changes. But Beat has been dropped from uh, FOWT here. Might give them the edge they need, but Jive Turkey does take out the, uh, the the McCree there, and it looks like that. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's gonna happen here. They're uh, FOWT is gonna have to retreat and set up for one last hold. Yeah, Jive Turkey's on top, on the top, just being basically a nuisance. Nobody's getting getting to him at all, and he's just picking off people left and right, and they're not gonna be able to stop him. Yukali trying to go for that high noon doesn't get anyone though, and that's a massive stagger once again. And there you go, all the way push for member. Very, very nicely done by member. That was mostly guts because most of the engages there were were really just sort of dirty engages by both sides. Uh, they didn't like on the sides of FOWT. They just were always down a person and were never gathering up to get a push in. And on the side of team member, uh, they would just get killed. <laughs> on the beginning of the engage, so they would lose their advantage right away and go in 5v5, and it ended up just becoming brawls at that point, but you gotta give it to, to sort of jive Turkey at the end, uh, positioning himself very, very well on that soldier and just picking off people coming out of the spawn for FOWT, which finally gave the advantage uh, to team member and uh, got them that point at the end. Now, it does look like we might have a Bastion pick coming out for FOWT, but no Hearts and did switch back to the Zarya. But, one interesting thing here, Yukali on the Widow, that could be very scary uh, for, for team member here. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, he has really good accuracy based on what you've told me already. So it's going to be interesting how he plays this Widow. Now, uh, earlier it was... It was Jive Turkey on the Widow, and she positioned herself pretty much a little farther back away from the engage point, just waiting for the shields to drop and uh, picking off people that were positioned really, really badly. So it'll be interesting to see what Yukali does in positions, but it looks like now Yeezy has gone to the Bastion and the, the total switch up by uh, FOWT. Now, this is going to be very interesting. Yukali didn't switch off the Widow to the Farah there, probably for uh, some more crowd control to keep people off of Yeezy on the Bastion. Um, I'm not quite sure that member has the composition they need to, to deal with this Bastion pick. Yeah, I don't think so either, and this is going to be interesting. Uh, because if they can if they can sort of uh, set sail here and make sure, they're probably going to blow through everybody up on that top, uh, top ledge there. Now Yukali is already going into the back line trying to get some picks here. So just uh, dealing damage to everyone, taking down the Junkrat immediately and just keeps pumping damage into the rest of the team. The, it looks like the Bastion is not even needed, but no, down he goes. Not much luck there, but it did distract the team long enough to let FOWT just push straight through the first choke. Yeah, and Yeezy's getting all the kills that he absolutely needs here, and now the Bastion is in a position where he's going to just start tearing people apart. And I don't think a uh, member here is going to be able to sort of stop it unless they get really, really lucky with an ult. Yeah, I do I do definitely think that member needs to, to change something up here. Perhaps get a, a, a tracer in for that, that pulse bomb um, or, or something of the sorts. They do have a, a Farah now, which could probably help along with the Junkrat, but just not much happening so far. It's just a, a straight, clean push through from uh, FOWT. And yeah. down goes to Farah as well. Yeah, and Aaron goes to it's taken down too, and therefore now they're just getting badly staggered. Splits coming out all over the place, and they're just going to get a lot of free push here. Yeezy's still on that bastion, just not relenting and killing people left and right. Now, it looks like Yukali managed to get into the back lines there and, and take out the Mercy, but just getting shut down by Kikuya immediately. But 
honestly, just losing Yukali is not going to be enough for the um, uh, member to have an advantage this time. Yeezy is definitely the the, uh, the biggest threat to them right now, and they're just not really dealing with them too well. Just so many shields for them to deal with, and here comes the ult from the Bastion. Now let's see if he can get anyone. It looks like he's just sort of shooting all over the place. Doesn't get anyone. Gets shut down by the soldier there. Very unfortunate for Yeezy. It does get rest immediately. Let's see if he can get set up before um, Member deals with him. He does choose to set up off the cart, which is a pretty um, good strat here. You did see that being pulled out in the uh, the World Cup. You saw um, uh, for uh, at the Envious team, or sorry, not the the World Cup. The uh... oh yeah, in the uh, in the Overwatch Open final. Uh, where Envious yeah. basically set up not on the point, but on uh, the areas around the payload on 66, and basically that's how they won the fight. Thank you for picking up there. <laughs> I sort of uh, lost my train of thought. <laughs> it but, was uh, used a lot in the World Cup, too, uh, by Team France, and uh, looks like Yeezy finally went down. Yeezy went down, but got uh, rezzed again, and not quite sure where he went. Oh, and there he goes, <laughs> trying to run away, not quite able to unfortunately and it does seem like FOWT might have to switch here as they probably won't be able to set up again yeah that was that they got the bastion as far as I think they would have gotten that bastion and Yeezy as far is switching to the Reaper for close range damage Hartson now going to the Zarya they're they're realizing that this is going to be a hard push from the front door all the way to the back but they have so much time they have four minutes 33 seconds to actually push this all the way to the end so it'll be interesting to see what they do here on their initial pushes. Now team going in, it looks like FOWT is dropping the barrier for an, in an initiation here. And Yeezy does already get the early pick for the uh, the res going down. And more picks coming out from FOWT. This looks like it's going to be pretty clean. This uh, member haven't really gotten any picks as of yet. And yeah. this might just be a clean roll through if they can just keep staggering um, member here. Yeah, this is pretty brutal. Uh, the ults that were used by team member there were just not effective on that initial push. Ooh, big dragon coming through. Very big dragon, but not a very uh, very strong one as no one really falls down. Uh, looks like first pick coming off of, uh, of uh, member there, taking down Safi, but he gets rest immediately. Fight is just being held here, and Pixar is sort of coming left and right right now. Looks like Yukali is uh, in the back line trying to deal with the tanks right now. Just sort of hopping around, poking left and right, just trying his best, but not much is happening and he's sort of left alone in the back there. Yeezy popping oh. up with all getting four people. What a performance. All that's left now is that Genji on point and that's going to be it. Jotrick, he's got to be a hero here. He cannot die. Oh, and it's too late. They're going to push in and they have four minutes on the on that's, the reset that is insane that's <laughs> absolutely mental <laughs> good lord what a performance from fowt what a great timed alt by yeezy there at the very end it looked like a uh, team member there were finally going to start getting set up and if they were able to hold at that point right there it makes it very very hard for fowt to sort of engage uh, the the payload again because of the positioning they would have to go uh, basically through most of the map to even just touch the payload uh, but that alt was perfectly timed takes out four and gave gives them so much time left here now team member has got to pull something out of the hat because they need to get pretty pretty far it looks like a pause is requested by Hartson um, now it does look like uh, team member is rolling with the same strat here with Aaron on the uh, the bastion this time. Yeah, the but pirate ship. I, uh... The pirate ship does work, and it's very, very hard to break. If a team is not ready for it, it'll get you a point and a half minimum. So if you do not have anything to break those shields, uh, you're just going to have serious, serious issues against uh, the pirate ship as it comes through. Um, the real way that I've seen it broken is that a team has to have a, a defensive Sombra to be able to sort of knock out all the shields and knock Aaron out of... Uh, out of configuration to sort of go in and engage, but there are a lot, a lot of sort of escort maps don't allow for a sombra defense, so it's it makes it very very difficult. Um, 
Oh, looks now, like I do expect FOWT to be expecting the Bastion pick here. Um, I know for one, Hartson usually always says that, okay, they're probably going to run Bastion, so let's counter that first things first. Right. So I'm, I'm expecting them to sort of um, run the uh, the Bastion counter from the get-go here. So but we'll see what happens. Yeah, they know. I mean, they only have a minute compared to the four that uh, FOWT have, so they've got to make sure that they pick up uh, at least a high or a, a high damage sort of configuration to sort of break down those shields. But I'm not really seeing anything that'll that'll counter it very easily. Um, yeah, not even a, a Tracer, a Junkrat, or a Far or anything. No, not at all. So I think FOWT is going to be in for a bit of a shock here. <laughs> uh, they're going to see that Bastion come through and they're going to have to back up almost right away. Oh yeah. Just uh, keeping eyes on Aaron here. Let's see how he chooses to play this. Just falls off the cart immediately. Probably, uh... No, oh, he's, he's having a bit of a hard time getting set up here. Not the uh, not the greatest, shall we say. <laughs> but, uh, fortunately enough for member, FOWT did choose to, to set up for uh, for the, uh, the choke instead of the high ground here. Otherwise, that might have been it for member. Yeah. Sort of already through the first choke, and down goes to Reinhardt, the sort of main crusader here. But getting back up immediately, Aaron's just sort of going to town, doing a bit of damage to everyone. But uh, not much is happening pick wise. It looks like FOWT is getting all the picks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, Aaron not being able to get on top of the payload really sort of closed in the sort of like shooting area that, that he had, and it didn't allow him to sort of position himself properly and that's going to be it they only had a minute is, oh my <laughs> god that is so unfortunate for member at with fowt having those four minutes just to get through the first choke i do believe this match is basically already decided we we're going to have to see a hold of epic proportions and i don't know if you've played long enough if you ever saw a uh, team envious basically spawn trap a team on this map but they really didn't even allow them to get on the payload uh, I can't remember, I think it was Complexity, uh, who basically what they ended up doing is in, in order to trap them in the payload, they basically fought right here and just didn't allow them out of the doors. That's what's I going to happen. I believe I saw that. <laughs> That's what's going to have to happen here, uh, because the Golden Box of Victory is literally straight through... Uh, just through the tunnel and uh, you know that's not going to be very very hard to get uh, even if you play very very badly and they actually have four seconds more than the map would actually allow on first point so uphill sledding here for team member unfortunately it does look like team member is choosing to to pull out that Symmetra pick um, and FOWT is not going with the Bastion, surprisingly enough. Yeah, I, I don't think they, they need to go out with the Bastion here. I think that would be a little bit of rubbing it in almost. But... <laughs> <laughs> but Look at us, we can get on top of the payload. <laughs> oh, you're going to have to talk to Aaron about that. <laughs> <laughs> now, it does look like a uh, member is taking the fight to their spawn doors and already getting three picks. Oh, that's pretty massive that's massive and they boss basically did exactly what i said that they're going to have to do is basically trap them in their spawn and don't let them out so if if they can do this properly they can win and with aaron already at 65 percent on the symmetra uh if they can get that teleporter up it's going to be pretty hard for fowt to get out of the spawn they might have to go bastion just to get some front end damage here it looks like they do pick up some momentum now as the payload is moving. Oh, Hearts and Ghosts for just a, a joyride there going, just sent flying. But it looks like FOWT is keeping the momentum going here, and not much member is really able to do about it. They can't, they're not really initiating uh, on the cart here as they probably should be doing. Yeah, they, I think they're just trying to sort of temper themselves before they commit, but they don't have much room left. They've got to go. Now it does look like we have a, uh, I believe that is a, yeah, a teleporter set up here by a uh, member being able to get back to the point very fast. Very, very good for them. Uh, Riptide does come out here just sort of toying around with Hartson and down he goes. 
Uh, all that's left on point is Safi here, and he's going to get staggered to all hell, and there he goes, yeah. Yeah, this is going to be a bit problematic here for FOWT. That teleporter... Oh, looks like Yukali just took out the teleporter. So that was that was one. They needed to get that done to get this push done. So there goes the advantage for a team member. Now, speaking of advantage, it does look like FOWT is building that ult advantage right now, which... Honestly, it's probably all they need to, to push through this little little choke here. This is not but uh, and down goes two people already. That's a that's a pretty big advantage for uh, for FOWT for this fight. And a third going down, plus all their alts. I think that might be all they need to do if they just play this right. But an earth shatter coming out there from a team member does get two people down. But popping off the transcendence there, Safi saving himself. And all that's left now is the, the final Crusader, Reinhardt, there on point, and I don't believe Member is going to be able to get back in time. Hey, they killed 2 minutes 30 seconds of that. They lasted a lot longer than I thought that they were going to, because I thought they were going to get straight rolled, but they gave it a go, and that was sort of fun to watch. <laughs> Absolutely. That was that was an incredible match, an incredible performance at the end there by, uh, by Member, holding off FOWT for that long. <laughs> But in the end, FOWT did win, and uh, depending on how they performed in uh, in their first match, they might be uh, going to the finals. I think so. And uh, great, great high noon play of the game there by Yeezy. So that's a win for FOWT team member. Gave it a go. Uh, unfortunately, that was a that was a very heroic push there on their side, but they just couldn't get the minute uh, the minute push that they had done properly, or that would have been very very much closer to what we thought. If they were able to get point one on their push um, because of the defense they ended up playing against FOWT, I think this match would have been a lot closer than we thought we it would have been. So um, we'll probably need some clarification from Hartsen here as to. Uh, we've played all three matches, and I don't know what's up next for us. So, yeah. uh, let's figure out. I just asked him there, see if he uh, if he responds. But it does look like it may be over. Yet yeah, that's it. All right. So, <laughs> I, I guess that's it. <laughs> okay. For, uh, for the next time, we should probably uh, get the, the rules all written out before we start, so we're entirely sure what's going on. But, um... GG, well played to everyone. Absolutely, and uh, and this is a sort of like a, just a pickup game for people who are interested in playing sort of like an organized form of Overwatch. As we know that there are a lot of people who are in between tournaments right now, is trying to keep make sure that they sort of stay in Overwatch shape, as we say, making sure that like teamwork and accuracy and stuff. And this is such a great way to play it. I'd like to thank Immorals uh, for arranging all of this. They're their Discord apparently is now like the new 2500 plus hangout for pretty much everyone in competitive Overwatch at this point. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, speaking of which, let me get some advertising in here. If you liked what you saw in these matches, if you want to participate in one of these uh, pickup games with randomized teams, do feel free to head over to the Immorals Network Discord. If you have a whole team, feel free to invite them as well. We'll get you set up with your own role and your own channels. You can speak in. Do whatever you want. Your team captain can set up more rooms for you to talk in and voice channels and all that. If you just go to that link, you can join the uh, Immortals Network Discord and uh, we'll let you know when the next pickup game start. Uh, the plan, I do believe, currently is to have one uh, every week. And they're a lot of fun. Yeah, this has been great for everyone. And I've had a good time. Uh, thank you for, for casting with me, Staff. The, uh, this has been fantastic. Absolutely. Thank you for casting with me. It was <laughs> so, very fun. Yeah. So I guess that's going to do it for both of us. Thank uh, for, to the stream. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've had a good time. And uh, this has been Hodohori and, and Koreji signing off. <laughs>